I feel like I haven't had to like look too far to find the bright side. Like how often do you have time to, you know, spend with your kids or your family? Cause it's like, it's always soccer, 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 travel, travel, you know? And like, even in the off season, it's like, I mean, you guys are going to camps, you know, we're still training to get, be ready for the season. I feel like there's just, there's not, I've always felt like I've always like wished honestly for more time to do the things that I have the opportunity to do now. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Snacks, where we talk about some personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff, and some fun stuff. So, Lynn, what's new since the last pod? Well, before we get into our personal stuff, I think we should talk about the response to episode one. I think it was great. Uh, it was I think great. the best thing that's happened is us having the hashtag tell snacks. Oh my gosh. I know. At the least fans, it's nothing except to us. The fans are so engaged, and we love it. We got so many good recommendations, and it was so fun to see people's responses mm -hmm. and just to hear that people thought that it was good. I know. I So I've been screenshotting um, some of the recommendations from Twitter, so we definitely need to go check some places out. Yes. Um, Molly at Molly Vision suggested that we go to Misob. Misob? And then Strang Hall in the Iron District. So we're writing those down. Thank you so much, Molly. First of all, we need to find out where the Iron District is. Maybe Iron District is just a place. Oh. <laughs> we're going to need to do some more thinking. But I said the Iron District as if it was a district. You did. Um, LFG and KC said Room 39 and the West Side Local. Okay. So we're going to have to try those. Yes. And then they also said for beer, casual animal and torn label. And they suggested the Kansas City Museum in the Northeast, which also sounds very interesting. Do you think that this might be a stupid of me to say, but the Kansas City, Mu Kansas City Museum, is that like legit the museum or a food place? I think it's a museum. Then I it think says, I've been there. Oh. Well, I think I went with Kingston. Is that where the, the science center is? I don't know why you're asking me. I don't either. I have no idea. We're asking LFG and KC, but they can't answer right now. Oh, the, also LFG and KC said day five hair, braids, or braided pigtails for you. I, I know. I saw that. I love Tell that them. idea. I love that idea. But my Tell them what you just got. Tell them what you just oh, got. Oh, I just got a claw clip. Everybody, I, know. I got a claw clip and I did it and it is so perfect for me. I, I do love the idea of braids or braided pigtails, but my hair just gets too like snarly. Like I can't rip the bottoms apart enough. Oh, oh this is what I wanted to talk about. Lynn gave me a haircut. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did give you a haircut. Um, Lynn with... dry cut my snarly hair. So now you can rip it apart. I don't think you should be ripping apart your hair ever, but... Um, exactly. That's why I can't be doing braids on day five. But you can put it in the claw clip now, which I thought yeah. was so cute. Yeah, it really was. Thank you for prompting me to buy it. You're welcome. I bought it, so... Oh, yeah, Lynn bought me the claw clip. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. Well, thank you to everyone <laughs> who downloads and subscribes and listens. We genuinely have so much fun making these... And we are just happy that you guys listen. So keep giving us the hashtag tell snacks recommendations. Yes, please. Um, okay, so into personal stuff. Um, I guess I'll go first. I have been, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last podcast, but I have been crocheting. Um, I have picked that back up. I used to do it back in Western New York and then... Naturally, I just went in head first, 100%, 100% speed, and thought I had carpal tunnel in my fingers. So I'm going to try to take a slower approach this time. Yes, but Lynn is a very talented crocheter. She makes, like, bikini tops, and she's making a sweater or a vest of some sort. It has a lot of panels. 
But it's like amazing. Like I'll look at her and she just has a pile of string, and then ten minutes later she has like a whole square. Yeah. She I, just is, knits like a maniac. I look over and she's going like this. I know you guys <laughs> can't see me, but Well, I I want to show you it, but I don't want to show you until it's done. Um Yeah, show us when it's done. Show us when it's done. Do you have a top oh. you could show us though? Um well it's way over there. Oh, okay, don't do that. Just... I'll just I'll insert here. Another insert here. Lauren's gonna kill us because we keep doing insert here pictures. Um but I'm really excited about it. I want it to be done already because it's taking forever, but I guess this is working on my patience. It's also making me stay present um, and not like be on my phone and it gives me something to do and learning a new task. That's amazing. So that's what I'm doing right now. That is so amazing. I'm really happy for you that you have that. Thank you. I don't have that thing right now okay. that staying present thing I've just been like doing I've been sitting on TikTok too much and it's just like not good okay it's literally get... so fun like I love it and I enjoy it when I'm on there but I just I saw this thing on TikTok let's hear me out I just saw it this morning it said spend your weekends so like because we don't really have weekends we just have like random days off like um building the life you want rather than trying to escape the one you have and I thought that that was so cute and I and yeah, and that nice. goes to, like, what we talk about all the time. I know. Is this just, like, the the mindfulness podcast? Yeah. So I just feel yeah. like when I'm sitting on TikTok, it's because I'm like, ugh, I'm tired. I want to zone out and, like, do nothing. But shouldn't I be doing something more, like, crocheting? Well, I think crocheting is mindfulness for me. I, that's what I'm saying. Well, do you want to start crocheting? I can teach you. I tried knitting, remember? I did like it. So why did you just make that face? I don't know. Cause I just don't like, I don't know. Okay. Let's what move I'll... on. Okay. Um, let's talk about food. Yes. Uh, um, okay. So while the team is away, we've been going to dinners and putting on normal clothes. Yes. And last night we went to dinner. Yes. We went to Corvino, which yep. is this nice restaurant in Kansas city that Pat got a job at and he's working there as a cook. And, Everybody was so nice. So nice. Like, they found out we were there, and they brought us a couple special plates, and a bunch of people came over to say hi and introduce themselves, and we were just very, felt very welcomed, and we loved it. They want the um, the current to come in. Yes. And they kept saying that. They said, Keep, bring your teammates, which we will. It was just so nice. Like, I felt very welcomed, and... Um, I felt like watching a friend support her husband. It was just like so fun to see like not only did they enjoy Pat, but they were like wanting to make sure you were a part of the family too. I just, know. It was so cute. It was so cute. I really, really liked it and felt very welcome there. So I'm really excited that Pat got a job there. It was like his number one choice of where he wanted to work. And I think he's going to learn so much. So he's really excited about it and I'm happy for him. Me too. Um, can we also talk about our outfits? Oh my god, yeah. We looked so cute. We I looked think. literally so cute. I was trying on outfits and was like, all right, this maybe just isn't happening. And then I tried on this little outfit. Oh, I've never looked better. It was this little skirt with a t-shirt and then these loafers situations. But I looked incredible. <laughs> you did. You looked the opposite of Adam Sandler. I know. I looked so cute. Insert here. Yeah. And then Lynn is late and shows up a few minutes late and goes, I had a wardrobe malfunction. She opens the door. Boom. No wardrobe malfunction. I just couldn't decide what to put on the top of well, the dress. Nothing. But I, So I didn't. So I put nothing there. I thought we looked incredible. And then we parked and found this lovely spot with great oh, yeah. lighting and it was just you and me in a stairwell which was yep. exactly what we needed for pictures and yeah. we just snap 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 snapped away wow we are so cool we are beautiful beautiful but then we uh, had an awesome dinner we did our tradition where we drive home and we sing uptown funk with the windows rolled down as loud as we can yep. we decided that if anybody is in a little bit of a funk of their own all you got to do 
Just listen to Uptown Funk. Little, listen to a little bit of Uptown. It is the cure. It is. Try to not dance to that song. It is so fun. I had a great time last night. That was. I that did was... too. Okay. Can you also talk about um, when we took Finn to the yes. lake? Yes. So one of our suggestions that we got was to take Finn to Shawnee Mission Park, where like the dog section is, and you. Our thought was that we were going to, like, basically drive up to a lake, like a dog lake. And lay, and we were going to lay out and, like, have lunch. And, like, Finn was going to, like, frolic with the dogs. And just, like, it was going to be a relaxing day. So me and, and Hammy and Lynn went and took Finn there. And one, it was, like, 100 degrees. Oh, my gosh. It was so hot. Two. Not a tree in sight. Not a tree in sight. Two, it was, like, probably a half a mile, like, walk to the lake, which was fine. It's just that, like, it was a it was a far walk during Lynn's recovery, which is, is fair enough. And it was hot. So there was a little bit of this, like, okay, like, should we do it? But, like, we're already all the way here. It was, like, 35 minutes away. So we did it. We just did it. And then we got to the lake, and it was awesome. And it was, like, a dog park at the end of the lake. But we were trying to, like, lay towels down. Like, we just had the wrong <laughs> idea about this. If we had approached this, like, it was, like... A hike to a lake stop with a little hike back. It's not really a hike, but we approached it like we were having a picnic at the beach. So mm-hmm. we were like trying to lay down and the the sand was like pebbles and it smelled like dog pee. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why we didn't think, yeah, of course the dogs pee on yeah. these pebbles. Yeah. So, and then like a dog like literally peed on Hammy's shirt and then like she tell the meat stick story. Yeah, so we brought food because we thought we were going to have like a little picnic and Finn was just going to play in the water. And what day was it? It was on a... I think it was on Monday. Yeah, on a Monday. So we didn't think there was going to be that many people, that many dogs. We go out there. Kristen opens up a beef jerky stick. She brought a meat stick. So then I turn around and there's like 10 dogs with their heads just basically on top of us because we are now laying on the pebbles there was like a line of dogs like they were lining up for a meat stick and hammy was like oh no like this is for me like this isn't dog food and we were like why did you bring that to the dog park it was so funny (laughs) so i mean we were like obviously we were expecting to have like this 10 out of 10 time and we probably had like a six like it was fine it was fun if our expectation had been better we would yeah. have had a 10. It was just that we like planned wrong. But like I was thinking how nice it was to be with people who just like adjusted and was just like, yeah, mm. this isn't really what we planned. But like, I'm not going to pout. I'm just going to like proceed. Everything's fine. I'm still with my friends. I'm with the a cute dog. Like, yeah. Okay. Like we're good. Yeah. We did just ad- adjust. Um, I thought it was just so funny. Like the dogs would go in the water. They would have the time of their lives and then they would just attack us. Like attack us and like shake, shake water on up. us. And we'd be like, okay, well, yeah, yeah, thanks. I know. It was, it was, we, if we had been standing up, pardon me, if we had been, <laughs> if we had been standing up like with our like fanny packs on and like we were throwing sticks into the water, not that Finn would ever go yeah, past his say. paws. But. We just had like a little, we, I had like a tote, like a heavy tote bag with a lunchbox in there and I'm hiking up the parkway. I know. We it was just wrong. We just we didn't eat wrong any idea. of the food. We couldn't eat any of the food that we wanted to eat. And then like, if we didn't have a lid on our drink bottles, we couldn't drink that. Cause the water, the dogs were just like hitting yeah. everything. Finn was having like a good time, but also wasn't getting in the water. So we were just playing with other dogs in the water. Yeah. Yeah. It was... It, it was fun. It was I an think you awesome sh- place. Yeah. People should definitely bring their dogs there. Yeah. Just don't go to have a picnic. Go to yeah. have your dog swim in the water. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So you heard it here first. I don't know. Yeah. I have sure. what Lynn said. <laughs> okay. But don't bring meat sticks. Don't bring meat sticks. I actually think food is not allowed. I just like didn't tell you guys that because I didn't want to like make it lame. Well, how did you know that? I read on the website. Well, then why did you bring food? Because I was like, I'm not going to not snack. <laughs> but like, oh, okay. this is this is why. When we were in Florida with the team, me and Lynn had a beach day where we stopped at Whole Foods and got chips and guac. 
And we were, like, trying to get lunch, but we couldn't, like, find anything we wanted. So we literally just brought chips and guac and, like, fruits to the beach. And we had nothing to do the whole rest of the day. So we just, like, laid on the beach for hours with, like, nowhere to be and just ate guacamole. And we were, like, trying to recreate this moment by going to the lake. So I had made homemade guacamole. But then, like she said, we, like, couldn't even eat it. Because, like, the dogs kept shaking, like, water into the food. Yeah. (laughs) It, Yeah. It was like the dogs were shaking lake water and then you would just like look over and the dog would pee on the pebbles and you're like, you have to stand up because that. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. So (laughs) go, go. I'm going to go again, but I'm just going to go and plan for it. Yeah. I'm going to bring like a little fanny pack, a ball. Yeah. And that's all you need. And maybe And then you just walk back later. It's just like a walk. It's not a layout. No, it's not a layout. No. Which we should have known. Um, okay, other things we've been doing is driving together everywhere because, well, I can't drive, but yes. now I can, I yes. think. Yes, but I'm not going to let her because I'm going to be lonely in the car without her. Okay, well, now we can switch on and off again once I get my car registered. Yes, so basically all day, not all day, twice a day, we sit in the car together. We, we listen to music. We chit-chat. We stop for coffee. We Oh, let's talk about the day we ran errands. Do you think people are going to find this interesting? Probably not, but we do, so who cares? Okay, so me and Lynn, one day this week, we were on our way home from practice. It was 2.17, and we had five errands to run. Gas station. Coffee. Coffee, FedEx, returns, sunglasses. Five errands. We said you get five minutes per errand. And we got home at like 3.04. And we just zip, 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 zipped around. We got I it know. all done. And that's where we got your uh, hair claw. That's so we even we had got... time to buy stuff. Oh, my God. I love a productive errand day because you guys know I had all five of those things written down in my phone as my to-do list. And I just got to go delete, 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 delete. I know. I was so happy when you said you had to go to FedEx, too. Stuff like that, when I have to run an errand... I, I kind of hate doing it by myself for some reason. I know. We should just start al- aligning all of our errands. We should just start buying and returning all the same things. We basically do. That is true. That is true. But that was a fun day. I felt like so productive. And then we got home and I was like, now I'm pooped. Pooped from our 35 minutes of erranding. Well, we had practice before that. And by practice, I mean I stood out there and watched which and is exhausting. The gym. And we had the gym. You've been in, you've been hitting up the gym pretty hard. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about this gym. <sighs> Katie, our strength trainer. Bless her. She's amazing. We've talked about this before. Everybody on the staff is so amazing, but Katie, the confidence that she has in my upper body strength is wild. Wild. Yeah, like I don't know what you're basing this off, Katie, but the the rope pull sitting on the ground, I can't, like, use my legs right now, so I have to pull a sled with a rope very, very far away with just my arms. Yeah. Right right into battle ropes. Right back right into back. that. Yeah, yeah, no rest. She, she's a lunatic. In a good way. Yeah, I mean, I hope when I, it's time for me to run, I'll be very fit and my arms will take over, I guess. Yeah, I know. I did the ropes thing because I saw Lynn do it and was like, that looks like good cardio. And I immediately was like, I didn't have to do this. And it was so horrible. Yeah. Regrets. 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 Big regrets. Um, But your arms are going to be gorge for some fun plans that we have coming up. Gorgeen. Gorgeen. Lynn has a wedding. I do have a wedding. Um, my, one of my great, graded, one of, one my, of gra- my greatest <laughs> friends from college, um, is getting married on my birthday. So I'm going, she's throwing a party for me. Yeah. So I'm going to go do that. And, um, I think that is a silver lining for being hurt. I'm able to go do things that I would never be able to do. Yeah. Excuse me. If I wasn't. Um, because we would be playing in a soccer game and now I can't do that. So I get to go watch one of my really good friends get married. 
which I'm really excited about. And you're in the wedding. And I'm in the wedding. And then when you get home, Marley's coming. And then Marley's coming. Yay! And then our boys will both be here. Woo! And but, we're going to go out to dinner for your birthday. Woo! Um, yes, I will be turning 29. Did I tell the story about Kingston and how he tried to roast me? Yes, but I forget the punchline. Okay, so I, Kingston is eight, and for some reason I find it very funny when I argue with my nieces and nephews. Like, not real argue, but kind of argue. Yeah. And, and he was saying something, and I was just like, you don't know anything. You have a pee head. And he was like, that hurt my feelings. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was just joking. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And he goes, well, that's why you look like you're 30. And I was like, well, that was hurtful. And also, that checks out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was hurtful, but true. I was like, thanks. And I guess you won that argument. Yeah. Wasn't I asking him how old he thought I was? Oh, yeah. What did he say? I forget. But I think it was nice. He is a sweet boy until he I doesn't want to be. I think maybe he said, like, 24. I'll take that. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> don't do that. I don't know about that. <laughs> Kids. Ruthless. I have I have forehead wrinkles. I'm oh this is the last thing this uh, this is the long intro. <laughs> I'm gonna do skincare. I'm gonna commit to skincare. I am so happy. You have for the past couple of days been doing it, and your skin has never looked more moisturized. I'm a, I am a glow. That's all I can say about a that. a glow stick. I am a glow. Yeah, I mean. Who would have thought? I mean, except for literally, right, except for literally right now because I have puffy eyes. Don't rub your oh under eye skin like that. God. But I did do. I had a tough morning this morning, and I even did vitamin C and. Yeah, can you tell us what's in your skincare routine right moisture. now? Moisture. Yes, it's vitamin C, and drunk elephant blue. Uh huh. And then maybe even a little drunk elephant yellow. Depends on how you're feeling. Yes, and that gives me that nice glow. Uh-huh. And, oh, no, it wasn't drunk elephant blue. It was drunk elephant sunscreen. Oh! Yep, look at me. And then what's at night? What are you doing at nighttime? Mm, I forgot about nighttime, but I can do add that in. Are you washing your face? I washed my makeup off last night. Great. With and a wipe, with a pad, with a wipe. And Sam, put some soap on your face with water. Well, and then put I, some lotion on after. I, I couldn't because I last time I did that, the face wash didn't actually wash any of the makeup off. What I have face Cetaphil. Wash you have? Cetaphil. It's just a cleanser. It's not a makeup remover. So I my goal was to wipe and then do Cetaphil, but I just didn't do the second part. <laughs> but did you wash your face this morning? No. Nope. <laughs> okay we're working on it but that's a step baby steps you now are putting products in sunscreen which is very important i didn't realize that there were so many more steps <laughs> i mean washing your face i even did a little bit of i did a little bit of lotioning on my leggles on your leggles yeah do they feel moisturized not right now because it was like three days ago <laughs> It's just, like, not that many more steps. One, washing your face is just, like, one more step. And I'll, I'll give you the moisture on your legs because you haven't done that in probably seven years. I'm going to keep trying. Baby steps. I, what about the chapstick situation? Have you done that? <sighs> no more than usual. <laughs> but you cut your hair, so... Yeah, I had my friend cut my hair in my living room with kitchen scissors, so I'm sure everybody's going to be real pumped about that. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, this is getting All really right, long. we're rambling. <laughs> we're going to uh, bring on the guest. We are so excited to welcome this guest to our show. She is a defender for Angel City FC, fashionista and legit model, mom and advocate for racial and social justice in America. We cannot wait to talk to her, so without further ado, Sarah Gordon. Hi, guys. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Welcome Thank to our coming. show. 
First uh, of all, we want to yeah. talk about the shoes. Oh, the shoes. You have yes. a million behind you. <laughs> what are your favorite ones? Pick right now. Um, they're not on the shelf, so I feel like it doesn't matter. Well, where are they? They're, they're in the special the, collection in my room. They're on the display shelf. <laughs> yes. This is, this is the hidden shelf. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Are those, are those color coded? Yeah, I'm a Virgo, so, you know, things have to happen. <laughs> wow, I love that. How many do you have? Um, I have over 150 pairs. Sarah. But also they... my boyfriends are here too. So it's like really bad around here. There's, okay. So yeah. you together have 150 or you oh, have no. 150 and he has, he can I get I have out. 150 and he has more. Wow. Where, like where? A shoe house. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. Does, I love... does Caden like shoes too? He does. Um, he prefers ones with pink in them. That's kind of like his thing, but he That's likes so them. cute. Um, so obviously you moved from Chicago to LA. Yeah. Were the shoes the first thing you packed? Um, kind of actually, yeah. Like the ones that I don't really wear. It really was the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of shoes too. And Sam, when I go to Australia, I'll be like, Sam, I'm going for a month, but like, I need help with the shoes. Cause I obviously only have a limit. And she's like, Lynn, you don't need these ones. They look like these ones. And I'm like, yes, I do. Yeah, I know what you mean. I totally know what you mean. Yeah, like I feel like I'm like missing something. I feel like I could travel with like a pair of flip flops and a pair of running shoes and like be completely fine. <laughs> but I look like, I must look like such a dork. <laughs> you remember when you said your style icon is Adam Sandler? Yeah, and I stand by that. Great. Well, we're going to get to that. We have like okay. a whole fashion section to talk to you about. But we do want to hear a little bit about like the transition from Chicago to LA, um, especially because you have a son. Yeah, I do have a son. Um, <laughs> it was hard, y'all. Like it was a lot. And like a lot happened so fast when we moved here. Like obviously I tore my ACL and, you know, there was just like a lot going on. My son had to start at a new school. It was just like I mean, like when you have a kid, like everything, you don't ease into everything. Like you're just kind of thrown into absolutely everything. But um, Caden, he's in second grade and he honestly, he adjusted better than me. I like to say, because I, you know, I miss Chicago. Like I lived there my whole life for 29 years. I went to college there. So it has been hard for me. I love it here. I love the city. I really like the team. The club is amazing, but it is hard. Cause I just like, I have my spots in Chicago. I have my friends. Um, and stuff like that. So, so at times I'm like, oh my God, I'm a little sad. But overall, like, yeah, Caden adjusted better than me. He was like, good to go right away. Had a new girlfriend in school. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, I tore my ACL. And my, I miss my, I miss Tierna. And he was totally fine. <laughs> He's like, mom, figure it out. Exactly. Um, That's so funny. So are you okay with him having a girlfriend? Yes. I am. He doesn't tell me anymore because he says that I tell my whole team and he's sick of me telling his business. But like That's so sometimes one time we had two girlfriends at once and I'm like, okay, I think like Damn. maybe we should slow down a little bit. Hayden, <laughs> like, <Kaden, laughs> the little player. Well, oh my God, you just told his business to the whole podcast. Oh my God. Don't have him listen to this section. Just hopefully no one <laughs> listens to this podcast. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so you did mention him and your teammates. Do they help you at all? Do they embrace him? Um, I don't really know where I was going with that question. So if you just want to tell us about him and the teammates, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys know how it is. Like there's obviously not many players with kids like on NWSL teams. So like, obviously I have more experience being in Chicago, but like all the girls loved him and he loved them as well. And like, I haven't like been with the team as much here because I am going to rehab. So I'm really not with the team that much, but like when Caden's there, like they're all, I don't know, he loves being around them and they're all just like really sweet to him. So I don't know, like I always say it, Caden loves women's soccer more than men's soccer. And he like idolizes like, you know, women's players versus male players. So he's just always been around the sport and he just, you know, he'd rather watch our games than a men's game. That's so cool. Does he play soccer himself? He does. Um, he started a new club here, the LA Bulls. 
and um he loves it he just like recently it's like get kind of getting good oh wait he can probably hear me he just <laughs> recently suddenly is like kind of getting good he's really fast like I'm like okay now this is my baby like before I was <laughs> old guys like what's going on <laughs> That's so get him on the podcast I'm just kidding um yeah. <laughs> um so when you were leaving Chicago, you have your nonprofit hood space. Is that still up and running? Was that hard to leave? Um, can you tell us? Yeah. About that? Um, I'm, so I'm going to have an event. It's going to be like a hood space BWPC event at the end of the month for um, mental health and awareness month of May. And it'll be like the first thing here in LA. I'm really excited about it, but um, it's like another one of those things. Like I obviously hood space means so much to me and like but it's like, there's so only so many hours in a day to do things, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. when you're selling at one thing, you're leaving another thing to just rot. So it's hard to like always stay up and on top of it. But like, I think the injury is a good time to kind of, you know, have an event and like focus on it a little bit more. So yeah, it'll be here in LA in a few weeks. Hopefully this event um, rolls out and goes okay. Yeah, if people want to like hear more about that, is there someplace they can go to like sign up or attend or like read about it? Um, so <laughs> but I'm just like, no, um, yeah. So <laughs> I haven't like announced the event yet. Um, oh. anything like that. And, and we're going to work with the school here in LA. So it's not going to be like, not going to be able to sign up, but like, of course there's ways to either donate or if you're a company or a brand to get involved, um, and stuff like that. And I think Instagram is probably the best way. Cause that's really the only way or email. Yeah. It's the best way <laughs> because, well, you can't do it any other way. I also just wanted to add about what you said about like when you have this one thing that's really important to you, you obviously have another full-time job and then being injured on top of that. I have felt I've been injured obviously lately too. And so has Lynn. And I feel like because when you're injured, you have like your normal obligations and then your like rehab obligations and then kind of anything else that you have going on, just like you said, there's like just less time in the day to the point where I just like feel like all I do sometimes is think about and rehab my knee. And I guess I just, this is a question for both of you or it's just something we could talk about really quick is just like, how do you ever like separate that time and be like, okay, I'm going to have like some personal time. That's like not about rehab and like not about soccer. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, like I decided to do my physical therapy kind of like away from the team at a different place for that reason. Cause I was just like, this is my seventh year in the league. And I just, I've never had a break. I've never been injured. And I really, first of all, I'm sad about being this like long-term injury, but second of all, like I just need to get away and kind of like selfishly like focus on myself and then like have more time for, for my family. So I actually feel like I've been able to kind of find more time because I haven't had to be at all of like the practices and stuff like that which has is nice obviously like I'm, I miss everyone and I miss being around the team but but in a, in a totally separate way it's kind of nice to have like a little bit of space yeah I think the the part where you said like have, giving yourself a little bit of a mental break um sometimes we just like are in it all the time and we forget to like take care of ourselves so especially when you're injured obviously there's there's so much newness and you're not able to play and, and doing what you feel is right for that injury and how you're going to heal the best. Um, I'm a huge believer that if you are in the best mental space, then physically you're going to heal so much faster and better. Um, so sometimes that's with the team. Sometimes that's not with the team. And I don't think you could like judge anybody for not being with the team if that's what they feel is best for them. So kudos to you for recognizing and getting away. Is there anything about this process so far that has been really difficult for you to manage? Um, I would say like emotionally, the hardest day for me was the home opener last week at the Bank of California. I like, I cried when I found out I tore my ACL, obviously like I'm not a psycho, like I cried. And then I, I kind of was just like, I, I, this sounds bad, but I felt some relief of the pressure I had on myself to like come to LA and be this specific person and player. And I didn't cry again until I went to the home opener. And like, it was honestly beautiful. The atmosphere was crazy. Um, and I was happy for my team. Of course I was, but I was so sad. Like I would just like curse words. I wish I could. You can curse. <laughs> we, we don't care. But that, so like emotionally, that was the hardest part. And physically, like the hard part is being patient with myself. Cause I'm like, I want to run. Like 
I want to, I feel great. I want to do these things. And then, you know, I'm being held back now. Whereas like a few weeks ago, it was like, oh, I don't want to bend my knee that much. So like, of course there's the pain. And then there's the like being patient as well. Yeah. Um, do you feel that like, obviously like for the listeners that don't know you, can, can you just like go through your soccer career just a little bit of, cause last year in Chicago, didn't you play every single minute? Yeah. Of every single game. But mm-hmm. before that, you were not in that situation, correct? I'm going to wrap this back to your ACL, I swear. But just for people who, who don't know your story as much, can you just like give us a little bit of like a yeah. timeline? So like I, so I got drafted in 2016 and I didn't play. Like I think my first year, is this what you're referring to? Yeah, sure. Like, my, okay. So like my first year, <laughs> I, think I played in like three games. It was bad. Um, and then same as my second year, didn't really play a lot. It was like my third and fourth, specifically my fourth year where I started playing more. And then like the last few years at Chicago was kind of when I became a starter and then, you know, was playing every minute. Um, So then, yeah, last year I was the Iron Woman and I got to play every minute of every game. So fun. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Do you think that like going through that challenge um, has kind of helped you with this ACL and like the mental hurdle that you're going to have to go through with your rehab? Um, yeah, I think that like, I mean, obviously like as athletes, we all deal with different adversity, whether it's, you know, injuries or playing time or difficult coaches or whatever, having kids. So I think like all of it just kind of builds resilience and character and I'm still an impatient person. So that didn't change that much after what I've been through, but I mean, hopefully it helps. I don't know. (laughs) We'll find out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, Lynn and I right now are, we'll both like read something and then like bring it to the other one and like try to inspire each other. Cause we're just like driving to practice to do rehab every day. Um, and so something I've been thinking a lot about and like reading a little bit about is this, like, it sounds like so cliche, but it's just basically like this idea that everything we're like learning right now and going through and dealing with is just like kind of an opportunity to make us stronger people and something that eventually we'll realize was like so good for us. But when you're like down and having a bad day, you're kind of just like, Oh my God, fuck this. Like, I don't care if this makes me a stronger person. Like, I don't want to do, I don't want to deal with it. Like Mm -hmm. why couldn't this just be easier? And so I'm like kind of looking for a way to remind myself of that. And I'm trying to like, imagine that I'll get through this and I'll look back and I'll be like, look at this story that I have now. Like, look what I went through and that it was hard and it made me better. And like, I have this like path that I've gone down that has, I don't know, not been as difficult as other people, but like obviously challenged me. So I'm curious if you and Lynn, like if you're like finding that you're having a bad day, like how do you get back to feeling like motivated and, remind yourself that this will like be good for you eventually. Um, Sarah, go. (laughs) You're the guest. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I feel you. I think that I, um, I mean, I have moments where I'm so, like I said, impatient and kind of like, don't want to look on the bright side, but I really do feel like through all this, I've had moments where I'm just kind of like, grateful to be here in Los Angeles and like just like have the opportunity to have these amazing be rehabbing with these amazing doctors so I feel like I haven't had to like look too far to find the bright side like how often do you have time to you know spend with your kids or your family because it's like it's always soccer 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 travel travel you know and like even in the off season it's like I mean you guys are going to camps you know we're still training to get be ready for the season I feel like there's just there's not I've always felt like I've always like wished honestly for more time to do the things that I have the opportunity to do now. And I'm like, Oh no, what if I accidentally manifested this? But also like, (laughs) even in the hard times, I just, I try to think of that. Like I'm not going to next year when I'm back, I won't have the opportunity to have this time to do this. Yeah. Me and Sam actually talk about that all the time. How sometimes when we're playing, because if we're just so into it, you have to sacrifice like family events and, summer vacations when everybody's going to Bora Bora and you're like, I'll be playing in the 
dead heat in Houston. But, <laughs> uh, but then we, we like almost wish time away. And instead of just enjoying the moment and being able to be so present. And I think that obviously injuries suck, but to be able to see a bright side and that you're getting to hang out with your family and you're kind of getting to do the things in the middle of your career that you probably weren't going to get to do. Um, I think that's like a good reminder that sometimes there's like a little bit of beauty in being injured. Yeah, I agree. When you got drafted into the league, did you have, you already had Caden? Yes, I had him. Um, I got pregnant like right before my junior year of college. Okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, how was that? He was like two then when I got drafted, but how was it in college having him? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. It was so hard y'all. Like, oh my, like the whole thing was a disaster, honestly. <laughs> Like I was, I mean, like finding out I was pregnant and then like having to tell my team, my coaches, my parents, like very, like not supportive. Um, and then of course I had some friends that were bright spots along the journey. Um, but I remember just being like really depressed while I was pregnant and like, um, Caden's dad, you know, wasn't in the picture at all. So it was a really, really hard time. But after I had him, he came to every game, um, it was a good experience. Like I am, I'm glad that he has had the journey he has like to be around the game and, you know, to, to, for me to have had him so young. Yeah. So, so you had him when you were pregnant, when you were a junior, had him, and then you came back for your season, your senior season, correct? So yes. And then I, it's called like pink shirting. So it's like came back for my senior season and then took my fifth year. Oh, great. Wow. I like, I just can't even imagine like my, cause of my life now. And if I don't want to get up, I don't have to, or if I want to go to bed at a certain time, I can. And you just like to think about being in college and having a kid. Like I just find it wild to my brain, but I don't even know where I'm saying. I'm just like in awe. <laughs> it was wild for sure. I, I feel like. I was so, I think people were concerned because I really was like immature. And then all of a sudden I got pregnant and I was like a totally different person, like just very focused. Like I knew what I wanted to do, you know, um, I was much more responsible, obviously. I mean, you don't have a choice. Yeah. So what, so when did you decide that you were like, I, it doesn't matter. I am a mom, but I'm still going to continue to playing soccer. I'm going to go into the draft. I want to continue this career because I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it would have been easy to say no, I can't play professional soccer. We don't get paid enough. I have to go into this other job situation. Yeah. Um, I, it was more so like the opposite. Like okay. while I had time away from the game, I was like, I realized how much I love playing. And like, it made me realize like, I want to keep playing. And of course the pay was a concern. <laughs> a very big concern. Y'all, I made $8,000 my rookie <laughs> Yeah. so bad but like I don't know you know like when you just don't care you're like this is happening for me like I'm gonna make this work that's kind of like what it was and I have no idea why good thing I was very stubborn because a lot of people tried to like persuade me to go a different route <laughs> yeah do you well I want to ask both sides of it like do, when you had Kate and you were playing professionally did you ever have a low point where you were like oh shit like I can't do this anymore but then also I would love to hear if You've had like a, a really like high point where you were like, oh my God, I did everything right. This is like perfect. And I'm so like proud of everything I've done. Okay. I had so many low points, like, and not to like <laughs> divulge too much of like my personal life, but like my parents, my rookie year and my second year, they were, I basically was like, you guys are watching Caden this weekend. I'm traveling. Like they were like, they were over it. They were like, you don't play. You're not making any money. Like, this is never going to happen for you. You need to quit, retire, and get a job. Like, they were saying this, like, in the middle of the season. And I refused. I was like, it's not happening. Like, you need to watch Caden right now. Like, I'm about to go on a trip. Because back then, like, there was no providing daycare for us. There was no bringing, at least for me, my son on a trip. And I didn't have a leg to stand on as far as, like, asking for what I wanted and needed. And I did not have a voice. Like, I was not confident in myself. And so it was like a much different time. So I had so many low points. And then at some point I finally just like something clicked in my head, like it's time to gain some confidence on and off the field and really go for it. And so like now, like 
you know, I've had so many high points of just looking back and like really like soaking up like where I've been and what I've been through and like how difficult it was. I cannot imagine going back and like feeling the way I felt, but like, I'm really grateful that everything has worked out, but I'm, you know, I, it's, it's like humbling to think like that's, that was some crazy shit. Like, <laughs> you <didn't quit. laughs> yeah, there, the league back then was, there was some hard times. So I can only imagine like having a child and like, I think about myself, I was eating Doritos, beans and queso for dinner. Cause I couldn't even like, didn't make enough money. So to think of like having a, a child to also feed, yeah it's like good for you good for you doritos uh, and beans though like what? don't ask me questions sarah she, lynn tells this story all the time i think one time for dinner she had rice and queso dude <laughs> and it, it, it actually that is kind of like like risotto yeah so like you were actually being like kind of bougie <laughs> Yeah, so Sarah's shut not up. Sarah is not by that one. She's she just like you're being bougie for rice and cheese. Like, okay. <laughs> She's like, no, that's disgusting. <laughs> I can't believe you you guys, have you ever had chicken, cheese, and rice though? Like it's pretty good. No? Nope. Yeah. You didn't say chicken, like <laughs> Yeah, you were missing a, a key element. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, so we kind of wanted to shift gears slightly. And I think that like the listeners can see that you're a pretty outspoken person. You're an advocate for, in my opinion, all the things that are right. Um, so um, obviously you were um, one of the, I know you're probably sick and tired of talking about this, but one of the people that um, was very outspoken about the anthem and kneeling, and you put a post on Instagram about why you kneel, um, but then you said when you were, when you're gonna stand, who knows? Um, do you feel like do you feel like like it's time to stand now, or do you feel like you still? I know obviously you're not playing right now, but like, do you still feel like you need to kneel? Can you like, I just am like, <laughs> after my years of being in Chicago, I am so over like having conversations about standing or kneeling. I, I feel like, you yeah. know, like I definitely know like a lot of the black girls in the league are like, listen, like we, a lot, especially the ones that were on teams where everyone kneeled, you know, like, listen, we did it now it's time to take action. And I totally agree with that. Like that makes sense. I just don't know if I see myself standing to be honest. Cause I'm just like, bro, like this, this still, this still isn't right. You know? And it, it still makes people mad, which to me is like, if, if people are still like reacting to it, you know, I, I guess it still means something. But at the same time, like I have no interest in like having conversations about why people should stand or kneel because like that is so far gone for me. Yeah. I just, I'm at a point where I'm like, I want to do what I want to do, but I also want to listen to the other black girls on the team and like what they think is important, you know, of course, but also like, it's just like that, the whole conversation for me is just, I'm over it. Yeah. Do you, um, when did you like, cause you, you alluded to like before how you said, Sarah, get some confidence. Is that when you like started to be more outspoken about things or have you always been like, this is what I believe in. I'm just going to say how I feel. Okay. So I've been like blunt in different ways, but like, <laughs> to be honest, not to get really political here, this is really embarrassing because I feel like I'm having a conversation with you guys and I have to remind myself that people are going <laughs> to listen. But like I was adopted into a white family and like grew up in a white suburb. Um, and very conservative family, like very conservative. And like growing up, I got by by doing what my parents told me to do. So I didn't say my beliefs when it came to things. I kind of just did what I was told to do. And I think that's why, you know, like after being an adult, specifically like my first few years in the league, like I'm an adult now, I can do what I want. I didn't have that voice because I'm used to people telling me what that voice should be. So I, 
I think that like 2020 was really the first time where it was like very like, you know, an opening yeah. to, to really speak. But like before then it kind of had been like, you know, getting to that point for me. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Obviously I was adopted, didn't grow up in a white home, but 2020 was definitely a point where it opened the door for you to say your beliefs and just be like, I don't care what anybody says, like, fuck you guys. I'm going to like this. I feel like this is right in my mind. And I think that everybody else should think racism is wrong. So if you're not with me, and especially now, like having to talk about it now, I'm like, if you haven't got it by now, I don't know if you're ever going to get it. (laughs) Yeah. I, I'm so interested. Like, I think that, in 2020, like, we obviously all were like, we should need to keep having these conversations and we need to start acting and we need to change, like, do everything within our power to change the way racism is ha- happening in America. And I, the, that what's come of that has been like the BWPC, which is this amazing organization of NWSL players who are fighting for racial justice. Um, and I'm just, I think, curious now like if we were gonna keep these conversations going like how would those start to change like they're not about the anthem anymore um but obviously we still need to work on this and keep this kind of like front of mind because it's hasn't gone away so i think Mm -hmm. my question is like what conversations are we having now like that we should encourage people to think about um yeah (laughs) That was for anybody. I don't know. I feel like, um, well, I, something that I find hard, and Lynn, I don't know if you feel this way, is like, I feel like, of course, there are still things that come up, like microaggressions or like little things where you're just like, oh, like, why does it like, and you don't, I don't, Lynn, this is a property where like, you don't want to say something because you don't want to be that person that's always saying something. But it's like, <laughs> it's just like, I want to say something so bad because it was small, but it was like wrong. So I feel like that's still really relevant right now, yeah. having those uncomfortable conversations and like really hoping that like people don't feel attacked or like, I'm, I'm not trying to make it about race, but like, I just want you to know it came off like this. And then like the other thing is action and like really taking to the community. And that's why the BWPC is so amazing. And like, we're having these mental health clinics this month and, and stuff like that, because obviously action is going to be the biggest thing. I would agree with that. I think that continuing to, not check people, but say like, Hey, that wasn't the right way to say that. Um, I think there's two groups of people. There's people that are like too far gone that you're just never going to get back. But then there's a group of people that just don't know what, what they're saying sometimes. And I, I think that just letting people get away with, with saying things that are inappropriate, um, just continues this cycle of, like acceptance. And, um, so I think that like, that goes with anything, I guess, just calling people out and being like, Hey, I don't know if you realized, but that was wrong. Yeah. You mentioned that you were adopted and that you grew up with a white family. Um, you've mentioned to me before how you being, um, a person of mixed race, how you've had to like, feel like you need to like take back your blackness and like claim your blackness. Can you like, just talk about that a little bit. Well, cause I just think that like being somebody who's mixed, like that's a real thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard because like, I'm obviously don't want to, I never want to throw a pity party for myself. Like, <laughs> it's not the same struggle as other things, but it's just like, it can be really hard because I always question my identity and like, if I have the right, and I also have this other side that's like, of course you have the right. And I still struggle with it to this day. And honestly, like, I don't know. I don't even know if I can answer that question. (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. I, I, I just think that it's like definitely a real thing that makes people go through and you're right. You, uh, even with, um, when everybody was talking about 2020 and, and you, as a mixed person, um, you're like, I recognize that I am not the target, but then I also recognize that like I am black. And then people, people look at you and you're like, 
are you guys going to identify now? But then like in some situations you're like, oh, you're not black enough. And you're like, right. Well, where do I fit? <laughs> right. It's like a different type of confusing. Um, I, do you guys remember what happened to when my boyfriend came to Houston last year and I had been like, this happened. And obviously the investigation found nothing. Um, and I don't know. My boyfriend's mom was like looking on the internet, like searched something and basically had me do it. And what came up was like, the media was like, Sarah Gordon claims she was racially profiled. And it's like, things like that make me cringe because it's like, but it's like, you just said, it's like, I know that I'm not the target. I'm mixed. I have the access, you know, more access than someone who's fully black. Like I have that access because of, you know, being mixed. I don't, you know, so I feel like but like going, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's okay. Going onto the internet and like seeing the media put it that way it makes me cringe because I'm just like, that's not what I was saying. And that's like my biggest fear is I don't want people to think that like I'm claiming like I've been so discriminated because that, you know, yeah. that's not it. It's a totally different story, but it's being able to like use the access and the platform to advocate for people who really experience mm -hmm. like life threatening you know, any kind of racism, not life threatening, any kind to any degree. Yeah. I, I think that's like really important because because you're right. It's, it's just such a weird space to live in sometimes. Cause you're like, I, I am privileged in some ways as well because, yeah. because we are mixed. And then on the other hand, half the time the world doesn't see, doesn't see you as mixed. So it's just like a weird space. But I think that, um, like you said, being able to spin it and be like, no, I have to advocate for people who look like me, but people who are targeted more heavily than me, um, is like such a great way to, to look at it and go about just, I think living life. So I grew up my parents were together. My dad is black and my mom is white. Um, and I have an older sister. And um, so I grew up in Fresno until I was like eight. And then, which is like a very more diverse place. And then I moved to Clovis, which is very white. And when we, it was time to go to high school because we were in another school district, we were supposed to go to this school that was very white and my sister was like I don't feel comfortable being here um and I think that she definitely struggled with her identity a lot more um of like where she fit in my sister also like had a darker complexion than me had like longer like thick curly hair she was blessed with like a thick curly hair um and and so she definitely like went through this identity struggle and she it was pretty cool like did this whole like presentation to my mom and she was like this is how many white people go to the school this is the percentage of black people this is presented like I'm not comfortable here like I need to go to a more diverse place so I can find out where I fit in blah 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 and she was so compelling that like we decided we ended up going to a school 30 minutes away a 30 minute drive um in Fresno and I think being a younger sister and seeing my sister go through that it like helped me figure out that like I'm okay being who I am um, and being able to live in almost two different worlds. Obviously some days are easier than others, but um, just having her as that example and, and she almost did the, all the hard work um, was just like, it's just cool that she was able at a young age to be like, no, like this isn't the space for me. Like I need to go to a space where I fit in and, and where people look like me, because I think if you have representation and you see people that look like you, you're able to do more. And wow, this, I guess is bringing me back to the soccer world where thank God we have more mixed people and black people and just a melting pot of talent. Well, thank you both so much for sharing about that. I know that was, Ken, I mean, I don't, I'm not even going to keep talking. That was wonderful. Thank you both. Um, we're going to move on. This is my favorite part of the podcast where we just pepper each other with random questions. Um, so, Sarah, we're really excited about this to hear about your fashion. Um, what is your favorite, like, designer brand? Oh, um, okay. So, 
Actually, wait, hold on one second because I don't know how to pronounce it. Ah! <laughs> don't mess up. I know. Wait, I'm actually searching it on Google. Oh, no. No. We're going to cut that out. Uh, right, uh, right. Cut that part out. Okay. <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite designers is, I think it's called Mew. I don't, it's M I A O U. It's like a weird spelling. Well, I, um, now I have to Google it. I've legit never heard of this, and I'm behind so on my fashion. Same. What's your favorite piece from there? <laughs> Um, they have, they have like corsets, leather, mm. goods. Like, it's just really cute. And it's like my style. I love, I have, I obviously love off-white RIP Virgil. I think I love it more now because it has like so much meaning behind it. Um, yeah. Wow. I'm on this website and I, this is not my, it's sick, but it is not my style. I don't think I could show <laughs> so much skin because I don't really like my skin that much. Why? I don't know. It's all like red and blotchy. Oh. <laughs> so I like need to like cover up my like arms. <laughs> That's okay. You guys, Sam. if you're listening to this, go on the website. This is very Sarah Gordon and Lynn. Actually, you'll probably really like it too. This okay, is, I'll look at it. This after. is lovely. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite fashion trend happening right now? Um. I love the one piece little like romper sets. I'm literally <gasps> wearing one right now. I wear them a few times a week. They're amazing. I just got one that's like a dress and mm -hmm. I can't wait to wear it. A dress? Oh, it's like it's like one piece underneath and then it has like a dress on the outside, but it's like fitted. I think it would probably just be a tennis dress, but I don't know. I think it's gonna look great. Wait, where's it from? Sorry, is there a difference between this and a Reformation? Romper, like are you saying oh. this is like a leotard with a squirt? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's a thing? <laughs> a big thing. My, I got mine from Reformation. It's so cute, I think. Oh I'll my God. Put... Okay. Well, um, Sarah, how do you like put your outfits together? Like what's your like process? Um, I feel like it's a process I take really seriously. It just depends. Like I have like mood boards where I sometimes find Ooh. inspo. But then other than that, there'll usually be like a piece that I want to wear that I want to like, you know, put my outfit, whether it's like a shirt or shoes or a skirt. Like there's usually always one piece that I'm like. And then you like style around that. Yeah. Does it take you okay. a long time or are you like, I know exactly what I'm going to wear? Sometimes like, you know, sometimes like every outfit you put on hits, it's like, yes, yes, yes. And then other days it's like, do I you wouldn't ever, do anything, you know? Do you ever like go to, to bed, like go to sleep thinking, I'm going to wear this outfit. And then you put it on and you're like, what on earth was I thinking? Yes. I've definitely done that. But I thought you were going to say, do you ever go to bed and you can't fall asleep because you're really excited about an outfit? Does that happen to you? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, okay, Lynn. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, but you see it has, it's like, has a shorts under. I need that. That is like really cute. And it okay. would be like a really cute soccer mom outfit, I feel like. Yeah, I'll send you oh the link. Oh my God, it would. It link. would. With like, I can't wear hats because my head is I too I was going to say, a little baseball hat. <laughs> but a baseball like bucket hat. Sam. Am I the fashionista? I think so. I know. I literally know. I feel like it's kind of in your blood because like your sister, she's good with you, fashion. So. You would think, but... I I'm not good. I do not have any fashion sense at all. I think that's, you got all of it. That's not true. This is what happens. And I would say I also fall in that category sometimes is you just, sometimes you're just like, no, I can't, I don't care. When you actually do no pieces, you just like don't care Me? to do it. Yes. So if you came in my closet right now, do you think there would be cute stuff in there? <laughs> yeah, Sam, you buy well, things okay, all the do time. You wanna do you want to borrow anything that I have? Yeah, those jeans with the stars on the butt. Oh, I'll take the them. They're lightning bolts. Whatever. And those are those are amazing. I also <laughs> meant to tell you, I just got that sweater with the aliens on it. See? It's sick. But you I'm probably I'm uh -oh. literally probably never gonna wear it. <laughs> well, it's also like hopefully gonna get hot. So true. Um, speaking about it getting hot, what's it's your hot favorite here. vacation? Okay, well, it's not here. <laughs> What's your favorite vacation spot? Um, probably Jamaica. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds fun. I just like a beach and like a margarita and I'd be happy anywhere. 
Same. No, same. Don't. Sam, don't say same. Like you like Oh, margaritas. yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I, I meant just like a drink in general. I, Sarah, we've probably talked about this already on this podcast, but I like always try to try margaritas. And every time I have a sip, I get like the full body shivers because I just like hate tequila. Oh, uh, you don't? I know. Okay, well, uh, that's what apparently you not. But I like love the yeah. idea of margaritas, so like it kind of sucks. Yeah, one time she made us go out and like get all these items to make a margarita, and I made it, and she's like, "This is disgusting," and she goes, "I hate tequila." Yeah, and I was like, "Will you were never gonna like this." I know, <laughs> but I try. At least, but you I try. literally get like the like whole like shuddering. It's that it's, bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. Um. So you're also a model and we were wondering what is like your dream company to model for, but then also like, what's your favorite job you've done so far? Okay. So I really want to, I really want to walk a runway in like New York fashion week or like a Paris fashion week. And I'm like, it's absurd because it's like, you don't see athlete bodies on the runway ever. Cause like there'll be a plus size runway and then there'll be not that the plus size is even plus size, but still they're plus size. And then just your typical, like very skinny. And I'm like, where are the muscles in the legs? I would love to do that. That would be plus sick. Like, That's oh, a really sick. good idea. Yeah. Where's yeah. the thighs? Maybe Sarah, maybe you create your own line and then you put all the athlete models in the fashion. That's so much. That sounds like a lot of work. I, I believe in you. I do too. Uh, I would volunteer to be a model, but I think you'd be better off with Lynn. She's like, here's your flesh covering one piece. <laughs> it's just like all, like long sleeves and long legs, just a one piece. That would be beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you always have to do before you leave the house? Or what can you like not leave the house without? Um, my keys. <laughs> Great answer. Breaking news. <laughs> or, um, my phone. This is so bad. Okay, maybe I a, got... like a beauty product or like anything else. Um, she's like, my I wallet. Say... <laughs> you know, I'll leave without my wallet. That's the problem. I would say, um, my eyebrows need to be like brushed. That's like, oh, the I need okay. to day before I leave. Yeah. All right. I, Lynn and my sister are like constantly telling me to brush my eyebrows up and put chapstick on. <laughs> you have to so get I'm working on to put it. Chapstick on. Oh my gosh. You're like my son. I'm like, put chapstick. I on. know. I just get like <laughs> crusty lips and I just like leave. <laughs> Sam like doesn't believe in moisturizing her skin. It's oh, like, what? wild to me I know I, it's wild I also just want to go back and say like you never said oh I can't leave the house without my child but I can like what if I'm that's leaving fair. without him that's fair that's fair you're great <laughs> you're right yeah scratch that Whew. all right Lynn shall we yes now you know we had to bring back the fan questions don't forget if you want to send us a question tweet us with the hashtag ask snacks Okay, our silly question, Sarah, is... Oh, that's a question for my dog. <laughs> do, you, do you have a pet? No. Oh, okay. Do you, well, do so you want one? You. Yeah, but I don't want another responsibility. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, the question is from Amber Dudley, and she said, Hashtag love the pod, and when Finn joins the show, just to switch it up, what is his favorite snack? Finn likes peanut butter, and he likes cheese. And he likes chips. Ice cream. He Lynn was giving him lots of licks of ice cream the other night. Um, okay, and then we can move on to our serious question so Sarah can participate. Do you guys live together? No, she lives down the hall. Three doors down. Okay. I was like, what? Yeah, three doors Go down. Um, okay, this one is from Yo Merengues. <laughs> Hashtag ask Saks, if you could have a food date with any athlete, dead or alive, who would it be? Are you asking me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess everybody. Um, Derek Jeter. Oh. Do you want to elaborate on that or? It's my first love. Oh. oh. <laughs> Derek food Jeter. Date. A food date with any Sarah. Athlete. Sarah Gordon would like to go on a date with you. She is taken, but she still would like to go on a date. 
It's just a yeah. It's just a food friend date. Where? What kind of food would you want to get? I don't know. Sushi. Ooh. All right. Well, what that is out there now. What about you, Sam? Um. I think I have to say Tom Brady. Oh, Thomas Brady. Just want to like go out and rage probably, cage. Like, go to Sweet Green and like sit there and just be like, hey. I don't know. I guess I don't really know. I don't really know either. I li- I in my brain just a million different athletes are like going through, but I can't think of one that I want to sit down and hang out with you guys. Michael Jordan would be pretty cool. Oh, that's like, a great one. That's have a, a great cigar. one. That's a really good one. Thanks. You can have it. Okay. I take that. Okay. And a margarita. Do you think he drinks margaritas? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think, think he was Tennessee because one time I went to his birthday party. It was like this huge party. Like there were a thousand people there and you walk in and there was like Hennessy on the wall. <laughs> How does she get invited Dang. to his birthday party? And we didn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm really same. not surprised. <laughs> um, so no to the margaritas. Is that what we're saying? Well, maybe. I'm maybe. sure he's not going to be like, no, I hate margaritas. <laughs> he probably doesn't get the same shiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I think he's probably like, okay. I'm Sarah Gordon, and this is the Snacks Podcast from Just Women's Sports. And thank you all so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women's Sports. For more great sports content, go to justwomensports.com. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis. You've been listening to Snacks. Can we get a chomp from you, Sarah?